This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. It's the 8th Annual Oscar Prediction Show! With your host, anyone? Anyone? Bueller? From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. It's that time again, Oscar Predictions. Since Oscar hosting has become the third rail of the entertainment industry, this will be the second year in a row without a host. As expected, nominations are decidedly white and male. Now, our prediction system... We don't see any of the nominated films, although we actually no, did. Or maybe two. Yeah. See who won the awards leading up to the Oscars. Who has the most buzz? Are there any controversies? Oscars rules are if you died, you're in. Biopics rule. Portraying an illness works well. And multiple nominations without a win helps. Now, we will list previous Oscar, the previous Oscar record where applicable in terms of nominations and wins, as well as odds as of January 30th, based on an average of betting sites via nicerodds.co.uk. For supporting actor, the nominees are Tom Hanks with six nominations and two wins and 21.5 to 1 odds for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. We have Anthony Hopkins, five nominations and one win, 37.5 to 1 odds for The Two Popes. Al Pacino with nine nominations and one wins, odds are 19 to 1 for The Irishman. Joe Pesci, Three nominations and one win, 10 to 1 odds, The Irishman, which won the New York Critics' Choice. Brad Pitt has six nominations and one win. He's got uh, pretty even odds, 1.1 1. 1 to 1. He's nominated for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He previously won as a producer, and he has won the Golden Globe Critics' Choice and SAG Awards. So... I'm picking Pitt because that's what the odds are saying, and the fact that he has come through and won most of the other major awards. It is a movie about Hollywood, and they love movies Indeed. about Hollywood. Indeed. I kind of was thinking, though, that they might pick the sentimental choice of Tom Hanks for Mr. Rogers. You know, some of these people might have fond memories of Mr. Rogers. That's true. It's I don't know. It's always a possibility. Supporting Actress. Kathy Bates, with four nominations and one win, 37.5 to 1 odds, for Richard Jewell. Laura Dern has three nominations and no wins, and she has pretty even odds to win for A Marriage Story. She did a clean sweep of the Golden Globe, the Critics' Choice, the New York's Critics' Choice, and SAG. Scarlett Johansson, at two nominations, zero wins, 27.5 to 1 for Jojo Rabbit. Now, both of Johansson's nominations are for this year. So which they means, don't really count. So, But that means she is in both the Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress. Kind of gets canceled out. Well, that's the theory. Florence Pugh, with one nominations and zero wins, has 13 to 1 odds for Little Women. Margot Robbie, two nominations and zero wins, 8.5 to 1. For bombshell. And I picked Laura Dern. I'm going with the... As you know. did I. She she swept, you know, and she's never won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. so. And she's got a famous Hollywood name, too. Right. So they might be saying, okay. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's going to be her. Yeah. So for animated features, the nominees are How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, with 46 to 1 odds. I Lost My Body. 29.1, 29.21 one odds, and it won the New York Critics' Choice. Never heard of it. Yeah. Klaus at 6 to 1 odds. Missing Link, 9 to 1 odds, and it won the Golden Globe. And of course, Toy Story 4, pretty even odds, 1.1 1. 1 to 1. It won the Critics' Choice and the Producers Guild, and it won both of our picks. Yeah, pretty much. I think that's a pretty much foregone conclusion. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. I, I mean, I enjoyed the movie. Yeah, yeah, it right. was good. But yeah. But then speaking of that movie, the original song, I can't let you throw yourself away. Thirty-four to one odds. Toy Story Four. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that because mainly, can you remember the melody of that song? No. Nobody was humming no. it on the way out. No. <laughs> I'm gonna love me again with one point one to one odds. Pretty even for Rocket Man. Won the Golden Globe, tied with Glasgow for Wild Rose for Critics' Choice. I'm standing with you, 34.1 odds from Breakthrough. 
Into the Unknown, 10 to 1. And Frozen, that's from Frozen 2. And Stand Up, 7 to 1 odds for Harriet. And we're both going with I'm Gonna Love Me Again because it's Elton John. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's going to be a real sentimental favor for, for, for him to get it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And the fact biopic. that... Biopic. Yeah, biopic that he basically... There, he, there, you don't see him anywhere else at the Oscar in terms of nominations. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be that. For Best Director, nominations include Writing and Producing. Martin Scorsese with 10 nominations and one win, 30 to 1 odds for The Irishman. Todd Phillips, four nominations, zero wins, 59 to 1 odds for The Joker. Sam Mendes with four noms, one win, 1 1.2 to 1 odds for 1917, which won the Golden Globe, the Critics' Choice, and the Director's Guild Award. Quentin Tarantino, eight nominations, two wins, 13 to 1 odds for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Bong Joon-ho, three nominations, zero wins, it's 4.5 to 1 odds for Parasite, and he won the Critics' Choice. That's right. Uh, by the way, the New York Critics' Choice uh, w winner was Benny and Josh Sadie for Uncut Gems. Now, I want to say something about the New York Critics' Choice. They are less and less of an indicator, <laughs> to the point where I may swap out for BAFTA next year. Yeah. You know, because it's more and more often, not only do they not pick the choice... The, the 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 Oscar winner in many cases they don't even pick a nominee Me. yeah <laughs> so I'm not sure what's going on there yeah so we're both going with Mendes yeah uh, and the reason for that to me is that he did win an Oscar already for best directing like 20 years ago mm -hmm. so to me it's uh, it seems to make sense and he's winning a lot of the uh, the the lead up to awards okay so for the uh Oscar for actor, Antonio Banderas, has one nomination and zero wins. He's at 37.5 to 1 odds for Pain and Glory, and he won the New York Critics' Choice Award. Leonardo DiCaprio, seven nominations and one win, 36 to 1 odds for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adam Driver has two nominations and zero wins, 10 to 1 odds for The Marriage Story. Joaquin Phoenix, four nominations, zero wins, 1 to 1 odds, even odds, for Joker, it won the Golden Globe, the Critics' Choice, and the SAG. And then Jonathan Price with one nomination and zero wins. It's 42.5 to 1 for the two popes. And we're both going with Joaquin Phoenix. I hate it, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, we haven't seen the movie. We haven't seen the movie. He has four nominations up till now. He's never won. And there's a lot of buzz, and he's got all the major lead-ins. Yeah, so, I, I don't like him. I don't want him to win. <laughs> I didn't even want to see the movie, but now we have to go watch it. I guess we have to at some point. Well, it's on your list. Yeah, I suppose. Okay, so the actress nominees are Cynthia Erivo, two nominations and zero wins, and has 20 to 1 odds for Harriet. Uh, her second nomination was for Original Song. Right, so she was in both categories. Yeah. Scarlett Johansson, two nominations, zero wins, 9.5 to 1 odds, Marriage Story, C Supporting Actress. Yes. Yeah. Saoirse Ronan, four nominations and zero wins, 30 to 1 odds for The Little Women. Charlize Theron, three nominations, one win, 25.5 to 1 for Bombshell. And Renee Zellweger with four nominations, one win, even odds for Judy. She won the Golden Globe, the Critics' Choice, and the SAG Award. And here's another one of these near Critics' Choice. They gave it to Lupita Nyong'o for Us, a movie I've never even heard of. Oh, I have. Oh, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. And in any case, wasn't even nominated for an Oscar. Yeah, she probably should have been. I, I heard that was pretty good. Okay. So, uh, and we're both going with Zellweger. It's a biopic. <laughs> yes. And, you know. and, and it's an icon like Judy Garland. I actually saw this movie. It was very good, I thought. I thought she was excellent. She really uh, immersed herself in that role. You didn't see Zellweger, you saw Judy Garland. Yeah. Now, none of the songs were nominated from that because they weren't original songs, Exactly. Right? Yeah, so. they're, none of them are original yeah. songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then finally, Best Picture, Ford v. Ferrari, 126 to 1 odds. The Irishman, 59 to 1, it won the New York's Critics' Choice Award. Jojo Rabbit, 76 to 1 odds. 
Joker, 13.5 to 1 odds. Little Women, 91 to 1 odds. It doesn't deserve it. it. Marriage Story, 91 to 1 odds. 1917, 1 1.4 to 1 odds. It won the Golden Globe and the Producers Guild. And Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, 6 to 1. It won the Golden Globe, the Critics' Choice. Parasite, 1 to 1, or 5 to 1 odds. It won the SAG. And the all important Central Ohio Film Critics' Choice. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going out, I'm going on, a out on a limb. You're I'm going out on a limb. You're going limb. for the big money. You're going with Ford versus Ferrari. Wow, you're gonna clean up at 126 <laughs> to one odds. See, see, so I'm thinking, you know how popular all the Fast and the Furious movies yeah. are, but they can't be nominated for right. Oscars, right? Yeah. <laughs> so everybody who loves that kind of movie is gonna go for Ford versus Ferrari. Mm, crafty. <laughs> I don't know. And I went with the safe choice of 1917. <laughs> we'll see who wins. We'll see who wins. You may owe me. <laughs> I doubt it. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. And I'd like to thank all the little people. Hey, wait! Don't play me off! Wait!